Get in, nerds, we are explaining Hearts of Iron 4. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about production, how it works, and the basics of what to do with it. So to get started here, these are our production lines. We've got infantry equipment here, artillery here, support equipment here, light tanks here, and then we've got a whole mess of ships. We're playing as Great Britain, so it shouldn't shock anyone that we're building a lot of boats. And then at the bottom here, we've got uh, fighters, and below that, we've got bombers. Now, these are medium tactical bombers. So first, a little bit of an anatomy of a, uh, an entry here. Here you've got the image and the equipment type. Uh, over here you've got what your stockpile looks like. So in this case, we lost 2,077 equipment. Yesterday is not accurate. There was nothing going on for Britain militarily yesterday. It's just, that's just the game sorting itself out. You don't need to worry about that. But this number is the stockpile, and what this is going to tell you is where you are in terms of your ability to produce it versus your uh, amount of it you've got. And I'm actually going to let the game tick forward one day so that these recalculate. There we go. And that's just to make sure that these are good to go, because these ones uh, said uh, even, and they're not even. Um, so, let's talk a little bit about this bar right here. This is the production efficiency bar. Um, it shows the, you've got this little yellow line here, which is the uh, difference between the production efficiency and the mass, uh, maximum production efficiency. Um, when you first start producing a good, uh, like for example, I'm not currently producing trucks here, so I'm going to start producing trucks. Going to choose a, uh, a manufacturer. We'll talk about that mechanic a little later. I'm going to drag this up here that you can see these next to it, uh, next to the other types of things I'm producing, and you can see the efficiency bar is quite low. Um, the floor of efficiency is about 10%, and you lose efficiency when factories either start producing something they weren't before, or start or either, or either come online and start producing a good, uh, or if they change the good they're currently producing. So, this bar here is going to, so, and this creeps up over time. Uh, as you can see, this is currently gaining about a quarter of a percent uh, of a percentage point per day. Um, so in four days, this is gonna hit 11%. So this is gonna max out at around 160 days. So that's quite a delay, uh, quite a significant delay. Um, what this means is that when factories first get online, it's going to take time for them to get uh, properly, fully producing the, the equipment that you want them to be producing. So, this little bar here shows you how much uh, of the goods total you're producing. Um, and this is going to change over time. Th and this only shows what you're currently producing at your current level of efficiency. It doesn't show maximum production efficiency. So currently it seems like I'm producing trucks uh, at a much lower rate than artillery. Even though artillery is... Uh, sorry, if I allocate two factories into this. Um, artillery is at 3.5 production cost. Trucks are at 2.5 production cost. Those should be producing about the same rate with two factories in each. But this one's much lower because of the reduced efficiency. Um, so, because uh, we're producing 1.66 artillery per day versus 3.16 trucks per week, which is lower significantly. Um, this is the number of factories we've got producing the item. Um, and there's a kind of a lot going on with this. You can change this up or down using these tickers, or you can use the visual representation here. So here's what this means. This is the icon that indicates a military factory. Um, you're going to be producing, a, uh, constructing a lot of these in the construction tab, but for now, we're just going to look at this. So this is our total number of military factories. Dockyards are over here. So we've got 14 uh, that are able to actively produce equipment, and 11 of them are currently producing equipment. We also have uh, three that are not currently producing. If I want to increase the number of factories producing a particular type of equipment, I can click in here 
to uh, increase the total number of allocated factories. So for example, I'm going to put two additional factories into producing infantry equipment right now, um, and I'm going to put that here. If I wanted three more, I would put it here, and if I wanted to reduce it, I would click this. So that drops it down to two, and instead of producing 17 per day, it's now producing uh, about 11.36 per day. I'm going to click that back in there. You notice I didn't lose efficiency because the same factory was producing the same type of equipment. Um, I know that seems hyper, hyper granular, but that's the way the game is built. And the reason this matters is if, just as an example, I'm going to produce... Um, hang on, let me... Let me think about a smart way to do this. You know what? I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, the, I, I'm not going to worry about an example because I don't know for, for certain how it's going to look. But basically, I know you lose less efficiency going from similar to similar. So I know if I'm currently producing fighters out of this uh, factory, if I canceled this factory and turned it over to producing uh, close air support, I would only lose a small amount of efficiency versus producing... Uh, something like tanks, I would be uh, significantly dropped down in efficiency. But since close air support and fighters use the same uh, aircraft chassis, uh, they use the same airframe, they're pretty close overall in terms of, uh, of design. That's going to mean a smaller reduction in efficiency going from one to the other than it would be going to something like infantry equipment. Uh, when you when you mouse over these different things, you can see a couple of changes here. Um, number one, you can see the total amount produced is going to increase as I mouse over these larger numbers of factories. Um, you can also see that this number here, the uh, the resource requirements is going to continue, uh, is going to increase. I'm not sure why it only goes up to 12, but um, that that is what... It, that is what is physically happening here. Interestingly, this one only goes up to five factories worth. I guess it only calculates a little bit extra. And maybe that's a uh, just a quality of life thing. Maybe it was causing crashes or something. Um, so the next thing you can do is you can physically change. You can scale these. So for example, suppose it's late game America and I want to be producing tons and tons of infantry equipment. I can turn this into times 10 and use it to allocate uh, 10 or 5 or 10 uh, factories at once. I'm just going to click that again to, to scroll off of that. Um, and that's how you uh, scale up factories. Again, that doesn't actually change your capabilities. It's just an interface thing to make this easier to use. Um, over time, you're going to build more military factories. And using this system, you can actually pre-allocate them. So, for example, I'm going to put two into... Uh, uh, into infantry equipment here, and I'm going to put th uh, three more into artillery equipment. Or No, sorry, I'm going to put three more into support equipment. Now you'll notice I've only got one factory available. I've got 13 in use and 14 available. So when I click here, this looks different. We've got these filled-in factories, and then we got factory slots that have been created. What this means is these are producing goods. These are not allocated yet. But as more factories become available, they'll immediately slot into these slots. Um, and they'll do so from the top up. So, for example, if I've got one uh, open factory slot here for infantry equipment and one for artillery, it's going to slot first into infantry equipment, then into artillery, then into support equipment. So, for example, and, and that's why the order here matters. Because it's going to pick these based on what order I put them in. So if I put support equipment at the top, that's going to get filled in first. And this is, it's basically first come, first served on this list. So if I take my factory that's producing tanks and cancel that production line, that factory is going to flow into producing support equipment. Uh, and you'll see a parallel reduction in efficiency. Um, these are both ground equipment types. So I'm going to lose very little efficiency making that change. Um... Alright, so I think that's the basics of producing equipment. You got... Uh, th that's basically how you work this interface. You got some helpful things up here. This shows your resources available. 
Um, you got your total modifiers to all of your different uh, equipment things. This is your uh, your dockyard and factory output. Here's your, your entire production efficiency cap, your production efficiency retention and gain uh, bonuses, if you have any, and your ba factory bomb vulnerability. And then over here, you can use these buttons to generate totally new production lines. So for example, suppose I want to start producing armor cars or trains. I can click that, and it automatically allocates this to the very bottom of the uh, the production line set. And I can, I should be able to click and drag this up. Here we go. And you can put it at the top using that functionality. So I can put this at the bottom here if I want it to be all the way at the bottom. Um, this is going to be producing tanks. you notice this looks a little different. I mean, it looks basically the same, but we've also got these chassis. What these will do, this Create Variant button here, takes us to a designer. And I'm going to tell you all a whole lot about this later on. Um, but for now, the uh, tank and plane uh, functionalities have designers that you can use to build stuff. There's a lot of modularity and variability with planes and... Uh, with planes and tanks and whatnot, so we'll get to that at a later point. Um, right now, uh, as Britain, we're also producing a bunch of ships, and that's a little different. Um, ships take way longer to produce. Uh, you'll notice that these time to produce numbers are expressed in total number produced per day or week, or month in the case of uh, our, our more production intensive aircraft. Um, down here, it's just showing us when these specific ships are going to come into operation. Got the class of the ship up here, the broad hull, and how many dockyards are allocated to them. Um, you'll notice that there's no production efficiency for dockyards. They are always working at their base production efficiency. Um, replacing that is a menu that brings up the fleet allocation. Uh, I am virtually always going to deploy ships into fleets. I don't tend to play with the automatically assigned reserve system. I don't like it that much. Um, some users may enjoy it. I do not. So I allocate ships directly into fleets. And so this is our entire list of fleets right here. So for example, if I wanted this Leander class cruiser to deploy into our, uh, our channel force, I would click this button and that's where that's going to go when it gets produced. Um, alternatively, I can just deploy it to a specific port and what that's going to do is when that ship deploys, it's going to deploy into the reserve fleet for the theater uh, that the port is located in. And actually, I don't know what happens if you have multiple uh, multiple theaters. So I don't know if it... I don't know exactly how that, that reserve system works, but um, I know it goes into reserve fleet, and what happens is if fleets take damage, this ship will deploy into those fleets uh, to replace a lost ship. Um, now, with ground, air, and tank production lines, you can allocate as many factories into a production line as you'd like. With ships, it's limited. Um, for a cruiser-type ship, uh, for, a, for a light cruiser or destroyer production line, you can allocate up to 10 uh, naval dockyards. For a heavy ship, let me see if I got... I don't actually... I have one heavy ship in production, the Ark Royal. Um, I can only allocate five. And this is basically to represent the importance of like long-term investment in ships. You can't churn out, you can't use, you know, 50 dockyards to churn out, you know, a battleship every month. You have to allocate them all. You would al have to allocate 50 dockyards and that would allow you to build a battleship over the course of 18 months or two years or something uh, that would allow you to build 10 battleships but they would still only all be available in a couple of years or a year and a half or however long it takes you to build them, depending on how you design them. So that's, it's a really significant investment of production to replace a big heavy ship. And that's why that's kind of designed that way. Um, you can also create infinite or rolling production lines. Um, and that's kind of how, so the way I tend to manage my production lines, and, and you can do this, by the way, if you hit the down button, uh, this is this is the number of ships to produce. So if you hit the down button here when you're at one, it goes to infinite. And that means this production line, if I set, set this to, uh, to, for example, the home fleet. Where's the home fleet? Here it is. So the home fleet. 
This production line will just continue to produce Leander-class cruisers into the home fleet until the cows come home. I don't tend to do that. I tend to set up the number of ships that I want in each task force to be produced so that I'll know when I've uh, gotten to the end of my current naval production lines and then uh, because these dockyards fill up the same way military factories do from top to bottom. And so for example, if I set each of these cruiser production lines to three uh, cruisers, then what's going to happen is when these are done, when this one gets done, this dockyard is going to flow into this cruiser production line, etc., etc., etc. And that allows me to keep better track of where my navies are at and what I need to when I need to make a, a concerted decision about what to do with my naval production uh, as a whole. Um, as with the other things, where they are in the production line is going to uh, affect what order they're in. Oh, and this is also the order here. Um, they're not separated because it's all one menu, but that's the order. Um, so if I put the Ark Royal up, up at the top here and I queue this into five, that means that any ship that finishes out is going to move into the Ark Royal first. Um, you can use these buttons to produce more ships. And this there's there's no such thing as serial versus... I shouldn't say there's no such thing as serial versus um, parallel production. There is, but you do parallel production through multiple lines. You don't do one production line producing a bunch of things in parallel. All production lines are serial in Hearts of Iron 4. Um, for those of you who played Hearts of Iron 3, you'll recognize that language. And for those of you who don't recognize it, just be glad we're playing Hearts of Iron 4 this time around. Um, I did not love the serial versus parallel production lines functionality in Hearts of Iron 3, um, but to be fair, I never really played that much of Hoi 3. I, uh, my computer at the time could not run it. So, uh, so yeah, so basically you're producing all these, uh, these ships and you allocate them using this. And you decide how many you want each of these lines to build using this. And, and so when this completes, uh, when this when this town class cruiser completes, this is, number is going to go down by one, and the cruiser is going to deploy out, and the line is going to immediately start on a new cruiser. Um, the other thing that happens is you suffer a reduction in manpower, which represents the, uh, the sailors going to actually sail the ship to, 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 to man the, uh, the guns and all that. Um, you lose that manpower out of your manpower pool. And if you don't have manpower available, first of all, you need to make that a really big priority. You should always have manpower available if you can. Uh, and if you can't, if you don't have manpower available, that's a really serious problem. Um, but if you don't have manpower available, basically that ship is going to sit here at the end of its production line with at least one dockyard uh, maintaining it at the end of its production line until you've got enough manpower and then it's going to deploy. So that's locking down your production, which is uh, absolutely not great. Um, the last thing I want to call your attention to is resources. Uh, different types of equipment and ships cost different resources. There are six resources in the game, uh, but only five are used for production. And those ones are rubber, steel, Aluminum, tungsten, and chromium. Speaking very briefly, uh, support equipment costs aluminum and steel. Infantry equipment costs steel. Artillery and other types of artillery, like anti-tank and anti-air, cost steel and tungsten. Uh, motorized and tanks are going to cost steel and rubber. Tanks are typically also going to cost potentially some tungsten or chromium as well. Um, air is going to cost aluminum and rubber. And then trains are going to cost just steel. For ships, most of them are going to cost just an absolute barrel full of steel. And the heaviest ones are also going to use chromium for their hulls. So what resources you've got available on the map is going to be uh, a strong determinant of what you're able to produce using your factories. Um, and what you need, and re what resources you need to trade for in order to keep your economy productive. Um... Oil is not used to produce things. It instead... Or sorry, to, to, it produces things, but not here. Not in the production menu. Instead, oil produces uh, fuel. And you can see here 
you can see in the production menu my listing I've got 50 oil and then you can see in the breakdown here uh, under fuel under daily gain I've got 2k and I've got a line item from base game which is 48 and another line item for the 50 oil that I've got producing 1.9k fuel per day so that's a very brief overview of production and now that you've seen this you'll be able to see what on earth it is that I'm doing in this menu here let me see it's been about 20 minutes that's a good length for an explainer um, next time we'll look at construction but for now I've had fun I hope you've had fun I'll see you all on the other side